No, because see, there are misconceptions today. They people have gurus, but they feel that there's going to be some magic, some miracles. No, nah, but that is because we don't know what we want in a guru. Yeah. It's like a girl before marriage. At three, she thinks something of her husband. She wants to be an engineer driver to be a husband, a pilot to be a husband, an officer to be a husband. These are all, you know, fantasies <coughs> created by society hmm. and by the social and the environment. Not by a real understanding of what I need. Hmm. Later on, she says, "I would like a man who life loves me, cherishes me, hmm. who protects us when we have children." That is essentially a family life, you know. Hmm. So we also say, "The guru, he creates you in yourself." Therefore, we are called twice born. We are born again within ourselves. You understand? We are, in a sense, atmaja. Atma born out of itself, and he is the seeder, you know. So, in yogic terms, it is hridaya is called the hridaya yoni, where the master puts himself as a seed, you know. But I also have some responsibility. Huh? I too have some responsibility. The the devotee, the disciple. My responsibility is not to resist. <laughs> That's all. How does one accomplish this? Well, there is no accomplishment when you are ready for it and it comes. You accept. Hmm. But you see, the other day we were watching a film. There, I I was uh, astounded to hear that when a seed germinates, you know, it pushes through with a force equal to three hundred and fifty atmospheres of pressure. Where does it come from? From the life force released from within. Similarly, when he has put himself in the heart and created a new being in me, that life force must have the force of who knows millions of atmospheres, and you come out of it. No resistance is possible. No, but the soil also has to be fertile, right? For that force. If you have accepted what we can call the spiritual insemination into the heart. There is no resistance after that. There cannot be. Hmm. 